next call is to adopt the agenda, but I'd like to add something to the agenda. Can I do that now or later? Uh, I want to talk about project managers at the end of the session. Get our motion to adopt agenda. So moved. Second. Second. I only favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Hardships. Approved by the executive director. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any requirements for 2018? Adopt the Robert Rules of Order. I move we adopt Robert Rules with the provision that the chairman can vote on all motions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Conflict of interest policy. Uh, Carolyn passed all that out to us. Is everybody signed? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Board meeting transcript review. Um, November 8, November 28, 2017. Did that hadn't been printed yet, has it? Reporter didn't realize that we wanted it printed because they're used to doing them formal hearings and where we don't. Okay. So we do want this one typed up, but he was able to get it this morning to us, but didn't give you enough time to read it. So I will forward it to you. But this is license approvals, waived approvals, waived files. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Interviewed. Um, start. <coughs> so you have some, don't you? I've got some. Okay. Um, <clears throat> license number seven one nine five eight. Um, I'm recommending uh, denial of the license, a $5,000 civil penalty for contracting without a license, um, and offer them a home improvement license when the fine is paid. Uh, Ronnie and I both met with this guy, and both of us separately come up with the same agreement. He argued for a good long time. and. I think still differs, but um, I th we, since we both concur, uh, I will make that recommendation. Uh, the next one is a home improvement contractor. It is eight seven eight four. Uh, recommend a. Consent order, $250, civil penalty, contracting without a license. Um, <coughs> also, License number three four five two five. Um, proving a monetary limit of five hundred twenty four thousand, but it's all pending on a civil penalty of one thousand dollars for contracting without a license. Then I'll well that that's for later in the in the show. Is this yours? Oh, it is mine. This is license number 72015. Um, they're making an application for a BCA. They're in negotiations now with home improvement license and they've agreed to surrender that license, pay a $2,000 civil penalty um, for violations of the home improvement license, but then once that's all satisfied, I have agreed to allow them to receive a BCA little r with a seventy-five thousand uh, dollar license restriction. That's all I've got. I have one uh, eight seven seven five uh, home improvement contractor. This gentleman had uh, built his own house, remodeled it. 
but he tied it up with his company and uh, I would like to find him $250 and um, issue him his home improvement license upon payment of the $250 fine. I have four. Uh, I'll felonies H I. H709 Hollis Herbison last offense was 15 years ago and it's long been off probation uh, recommend to approve him HI8783 Ross Construction he's been off probation for a while has some solid experience move recommend that he be approved 71895 <coughs> Pollard and Sons excavating He's been on probation for many years. He's built a large business in Kentucky. Wants to come to Tennessee to do some railroad construction work. Uh, recommend he be approved. And 72019 Alliance Works. His felony was in 1991. He's been off probation more than 20 years. Has extensive experience and also recommend that he be approved. Grace. I had one that Kathy's going <coughs> to give us the license number before the meeting's over uh, pool contractor felony 1992 conviction been off of uh, probation many years move for approval we have a motion to approve what everybody has said so moved. moved second all in favor aye revisions we have re any revisions move to approve second we have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. How about any LLEs? Got three LLEs. Okay. Um, recommend approval on two. Uh, one, number 61293. Uh, new, it's a felony. They're on parole until 2023. And that's, I just can't, I deny that one. A motion to approve? So moved. Do have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any LLPs? We don't have any LLPs. Is that correct? We got we have one? Yeah. Jerry, Jerry you had them? Yeah, Hi, Jerry, you had them. I move we approve. Okay, can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all. Let's go to Go Build Update. I know our main man's here. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I, I promised you a, a request this time, and I'm going to give you that, but... Uh, there's been kind of a recognition among the uh, various associations that that your ability to just decide to uh, give more money to go build is probably limited. So I'm going to tell you what we need, but I'm not here in anticipation that you can wave a wand and make that happen or anything like that. But I did want to uh, say that the most important thing we think that that you all can do and that we can uh, we would like to ask for that is a personal request is to understand the, both the need for Go Build and the impact that we're having and be an advocate for us as we seek reauthorization, which we are moving forward with. And frankly, we, we kind of have to this year in order to remain viable. So I, I will send this, uh, this is kind of something I put together or Ryan put together for today, but just reminding everybody that the average age of the skilled worker in the state of Tennessee is 43 that every five retirees from trades we got one apprentice in training and then we have the 12th highest demand for skilled labor in the united states so the the need is as strong as ever and i just wanted to remind everybody that and that's part of the message that we're taking to the legislature as well since we launched we've had uh, 90 million ads seen or heard uh, we launched in may of 2016 We've had 16,000 students engaged uh, at in-person events and presentations. We've had 515,000 views of the skilled trade videos uh, on our 
uh, Facebook page, and we've sent out over 170 toolkits, uh, education toolkits, to educators in the state. The question came up last time, how can we measure the impact that we're having? That's a very critical factor and one that we'd use in, in, in uh, determining uh, the success of the program, determining whether we should continue going forward, which we all agree with, everybody on our board agrees with, uh, and, and we all want to continue to use the metric of uh, essentially butts and seats and training programs. The state data is uh, lags a bit, and so it's hard to have that now. So we're doing our own uh, surveys that's currently in progress, and we anticipate will be completed and in our May annual report, although we're hoping to have some preliminary uh, detailed information in time for our reauthorization effort because as was pointed out last time, that will be requested. So we're kind of going down two, ro two paths. One is perception and interest, since the big goal of the program was to change perceptions. So we're using uh, in-classroom questionnaires, Skills USA competition surveys, which is coming up, uh, and then teacher and parent surveys. So that uh, addresses the perception and interest. And then the actual applications and enrollment data, the TCAT enrollment data, we're trying to do our own survey for that, as well as training provider enrollment and just talking directly to contractors and employers. So based on the data we've collected so far, just so we've started doing our own surveying, 23% of the high school students surveyed were aware of Go Build Tennessee. Of course, that's up from zero, so that's 20, almost a quarter. Uh, we have in the, in the ABC apprenticeship program, which is here in Middle Tennessee, uh, they're having their, uh, they've had the peak enrollment that they've ever had this year, and 53% of those applicants had seen or heard the Go Build ads. And, and uh, this, uh, of the students surveyed, uh, that we've surveyed so far, 67% of the students surveyed said they were more likely to pursue a career in the trades after hearing the Go Build Tennessee message. So that is, that is where we are in the data we have. At our last Go Build Tennessee board meeting, which was last week, and Carolyn has all the uh, information and handouts and so forth from that, which uh, is, should be available to you if you haven't seen it already. In light of the lower than expected annual revenue through the licensing fees over the last three years, actually the first year it was what we expected, I guess I should be clear about that, but subsequent to that has been uh, quite a bit less. Uh, we made a decision to uh, we wanted to focus on the part of our program that we think is most important right now, which is our grassroots program and continuing our social media campaign, uh, which is uh, a very effective and not particularly expensive. And what we cut, we cut significantly our media spending. So we had planned to spend about $300,000 on media. Last year, just by comparison, we spent uh, 444000 on media, so we've, we've cut that to $25,000, so pretty much eliminating all TV type ads, which is the most expensive. Uh, so that reduced our budget by $263,000, uh, which we, will make us uh, be able to complete this year. We've made no obligations, nor had we made any obligations that we would be unable to fulfill with the expected revenue we'll have and the money we have on hand. So. So I just want to be clear about that. It's not like we've overspent. It's just our plan for the three years was based on a projection that uh, is, is just coming in. We thought we were very conservative, but in the end, it's uh, a little bit less than what we'd anticipated. It's not uh, that 263000 is not a one year less than we expected. It's the cumulative effect of three years being slightly less. So that, that's kind of the delta where we are. Um, and so. The main ask really is, uh, I mean, obviously, if you can make more money available to us so that we can restore uh, that plan, that would be fantastic. But realistically speaking, I, I know that's probably not within your power, but if it is, great. But what we would like to ask is that you'd be supportive of us as we go to the legislature and seek reauthorization based on the data we will have showing the positive impact we've had and the continued need for it. We feel pretty good about our chances. We have a lot of sponsors already in the House and, and feel good about it. It's a fairly clean reauthorization. 
uh, and we will have to address the um, way to make the program sustainable from a funding standpoint going forward uh, after reauthorization, which could include uh, uh, increasing the licensing fees. If that, uh, we, whatever would would work that works for you and with the members, we've had conversations with all of our um, sponsoring organizations, the construction organizations, about their membership. Would they would they interested in that? We talked about is there a way to do an earmark of that? Things like that. None of that is. That's all just talk. But that's what we're trying to figure out. And we're open to input from you all. But the most important thing really is to understand the purpose of the program, the way the program works, and and why it's important for us to continue. Are the associations like home builders, road builders, are they are are, are they given any money separately to go bill? Or is strictly go bill is coming from our board and donations? How's that? I understand the question. The uh, uh, the question is: Is other funding coming from directly from those associations, or uh, or is it strictly the money we get through the licensing fees? And and right now it's strictly through the licensing fees. We've made no uh, effort to. And actually, we're a 501c3, so technically we can go ask for donations. Uh, we've chosen not to do that because that takes a significant amount of effort to essentially fundraise and all of the volunteer effort which I would say is is significant and would otherwise be costly <coughs> the associations are essentially providing the workforce to do the grassroots campaign so we have many members of the various associations that go to and I've got a, a long list of events that we've attended in 2017, a couple in 2018 already, and then the ones we're planning on going to and for the rest of 2018. The manpower for all of that is essentially volunteers from those associations. Wouldn't so, it be pretty easy to just contact the EOs of each organization and ask them could they get money from their uh, members to uh, help fund this? Uh, the uh, the, the uh, Executive directors of all those associations are at the board meetings, so they're they're fully aware of. Right, that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah, they're they're aware of it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any other questions? Well, to follow up, so reauthorization comes up when? Uh, that bill is already in and will be this session. Reauthorization, you're requesting do any changes in the formula for funding? There's no change for the for the formula. The only there's two changes. One, the, the one that's the critical one is just changing the date that the law expires, because it expires later this, uh, well, next year, actually. Uh, and the other change is just clarifying. There was some, um, we'll call it confusing language that got added as an amendment at the very last second when the bill was originally passed that led to some confusion. About what? Uh, it had to do with, uh, money being spent on certified or uh, uh, I, I should have the, the, the language right in front of me, but money spent on training programs specifically. And, and the, the design of the program is oh, not that I, money I from Go Build about. would be spent on training programs. It's rather to promote those programs so that people go to those programs. That language for the reauthorization bill be circulated to the board ahead of time? Oh, it's available now. It's, 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 available now. it's available. We've got it in our packet. Very, very, very straightforward. And we, we just, just so you know, we, we discussed a change to the formula. Uh, as Susan mentioned at the last meeting, the original thought was the board was going to have to lower the licensing fee, and we kind of wanted to stop that and instead use that money for Go Build. Uh, but in the process of uh, negotiating with, uh, in particular, the administration, but also legislators, um, in order for their support, it got changed to be kind of the way it's working now. Uh, that's when we're fine with that, and, and the feeling is if we tried to tinker with that at this point, it would increase the chances that, that we wouldn't get reauthorized, and that's more important to us right now.
viability and continuing is the most important thing. Tweaking the, the specifics, uh, that's, we can fix that later. So this reauthorization will go through 2024? Is that, is that uh, what yes, I'm saying? That's right. Chapters hereby repealed 2024 and the first, the first authorization was for how long? Three it years? Was, it was for three, it worked out four, but if you, we had it, by the time we received funding and could get started, that was kind of in the fall. So we, it, we, we launched in May, so we kind of lost a school year in there. So that's why we've really only been active for two school years and looking at our third now. Next, that's right, next year, that's correct. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Our legal report now. Under the residential uh, contractors on the legal report number 21, 2017 The recommendation was to authorize assessment of a $1,000 civil penalty and formal charges for unlicensed activity. The civil penalty has been increased to 2500 <clears throat> For 33, 2017057301, the recommendation was to close. However, the decision has been made to investigate the licensee. Number 41 2017060731. Recommendation was authorized assessment of a thousand dollar civil penalty and formal charges uh, for failure to respond to the customer inquiry. A civil penalty has been increased to 2,500. Number 42 2017060871. Recommendation was authorized $1,000 civil penalty and formal charges, failure to respond to customer inquiry. That uh, civil penalty has been increased to 2,500. Number 48, 2017062011. The recommendation was authorized assessment of $1,000 civil penalty and formal charges for unlicensed activity. The decision has been changed to uh, place into litigation monitoring. Number 51, 2017062391. Recommendation was authorized at $2,000 civil penalty and formal charges for dishonest dealing and competency. That civil penalty has been increased to $5,000. I believe I'm number 49, 2017062191. Recommendation is authorized a $1,000 civil penalty and formal charges for unlicensed activity. That civil penalty has been increased to 2,500 or in the alternative will close and flag as the respondents are repaying the complainants at this time. Number 52, 2017062421. Uh, Recommendation was assessment of a $1,000 civil penalty and former charges for unlicensed activity. However, the decision is to dismiss this complaint. 53, 2017062991. That was up for discussion and the dis decision was to dismiss. <clears throat> Number 56, 2017063921. Recommendation is to assess a $2,000 civil penalty and former charges for unlicensed activity. Civil penalty has been increased to $12,000. Uh, 
Mr. Residential Represent number 96 20170351171. Recommendation was to close, but we decided to flag and close. <clears throat> Under home improvement contractor section number 11 20160357217. Recommendation is to close and flag as a respondent is repaying uh, the complainant. However, we decided to send a letter of warning to the city uh, license department. Twenty-six two zero one seven zero five six one four one. Recommendation was to assess $1,000 civil penalty in form of charges for unlicensed activity. That civil penalty has been reduced to $500. Recommendation is to assess a $500 civil penalty in form of charges for unlicensed activity. That civil penalty has been increased to $1,000. All right, starting with uh, or picking up with commercial contractors, number one, case 2017-05-3611. The original recommendation was for closure. A uh, new recommendation is for a letter of warning. Under electrical contractors and LLEs, number three, the original recommendation was for discussion. Uh, the new recommendation is for a letter of warning. Uh, and as part of that uh, letter of warning, they cease and desist uh, to the uh, respondent. Oh, and I'm sorry, the complaint number for uh, number three is 2017-06-0401. Number five, 2017-06-4041. Original recommendation is authorized the assessment of a $1,000 civil penalty by consent order and formal charges for violation of Rule 06800127, subsection 6. Uh, new recommendation uh, is to authorize the, the same uh, civil penalty and consent order to form a hearing and same rule violation, but also, in addition to that, to ask for a voluntary revocation. Moving on to uh, plumbers and limited license plumbers, number two, case number 2017-067991. Original recommendation was for uh, closure. Uh, instead, the new recommendation is to close and flag. Number four, two zero one seven zero six one three three one was also, in addition to the civil penalty, to flag. So I'll add that. Move to adopt the legal report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Let's move on to the request for board opinion bids with contractors information. Carolyn. was acceptable. Uh, what the question was, was whether or not the uh, bid was considered uh, responsive because um, somebody else other than the licensed contractor submitted the bid. And this is on page one on your iPad, 158, three of 58, it does say note to buyer submitted on behalf of, and it lists the contractor is an electronic bid and it's not a bid envelope. What does it mean, what does it mean buyer? Um, it would be like the, the owner. Terry Troop, but it has down here that 
his or her email is at nashville.gov. That's her uh, job title, a buyer. She represents that ownership. Who, who submitted a bid? Uh, it was it was a firm, it was an architect and interior design company. They not, not sticks and bricks construction. I didn't see that company, but I was, it's only 58 pages, but. They listed the license information. Oh, well, I, I think you've marked it. I think you've blanked it out. I did. I, 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 I Okay, it. that's the reason I didn't. Um, as, as to whether or not that particular bid uh, qualified, I was talking to Carolyn in under 62-6119B. Um, the language actually says that the information should be written on a bid envelope or provided within the electronic bid document. And so because it's within the document, I think that this is a sufficient bid. Who asked for the discrepancy? Uh, government. Okay. It was Metro just making sure they'd done it right. Does this, take, uh, does this take action? Yeah, they wanted us to decide whether or not the bid was acceptable, if they called it, whether it was responsive. They said it was somebody else uh, offered the bid instead of the contractor. Is that somebody else acting on behalf of the contract? Yes. Yeah, uh, authorized agent of the contract? Yes. Two different pages in the. In so the it's a, so it's a, either an employee or someone they authorize to do this on their behalf. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mark, when he looked at it, he he said that he believed it was acceptable. He wouldn't reject it, but uh, then they come back and they wanted a formal. Have a motion. Yes, I, I would move that we would apply to Metropolitan uh, Nashville government that w the license board thinks that the, uh, agrees that this uh, bid is uh, legal as a legal document. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Contractor inspector positions. Uh, just a short update that I will be moving forward in the next couple of weeks. Starting the uh, getting the position established and then advertising the requirements for it, the, the criteria. Hopefully, they'll have a lot more, but that's what we're going to start out with. How many do you hope to hire? Three. And that's statewide. One in each grand division. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of territory. So utilize the investigator pool that's with the department as well. Uh, updates on formal hearings. Legislation. And we have two bills. I think uh, I'm glad David was here to explain those for the. All, but it does affect the industry. And then there's a. F bill for residential contractors that called homeowners or take their money without doing the work. And so that's also a How, can I go back to the uh, informal or informal hearings? How are we on our backlog? Are we still months behind? Or we have 47 cases that we're, can you just give me a ballpark on those? I think this was a record 
legal report. Have you all ever had this many cases before? But uh, I know it, it was a big one, so I think it uh, will. Um, of course, I'm really referring to formal hearings. The formal hearings. Somebody could at the next meeting sort of let us know, hey, we're 40 behind or we're yeah. eight. Or I do have a report that's broken down where it's the legal charges have been authorized, where y'all have voted to have a formal hearing or settle, and then we've got some that where it's actually waiting to uh, schedule a formal hearing. So I can get it broken down. I'd be down more interested way. in waiting because okay. of Almost every one of those we authorize it, but they usually send their money in. Yeah, but yeah, I, I do have that in a report I can give to you. What's the oldest? Do we know? 2012. Further behind than that in the past, hadn't we? Discuss the budget. Budget. Where we are, and we're pretty much in line. In line of how we were in 2016 and the prior year, we're actually a little ahead. So, so um, the department, when they do our books they do show us with a, a negative uh, amount for November that's when the go bill come out but uh, they have us with a balance of 186,454 but our balance right now is uh, 397,000 Do you have any questions on the budget? Uh, before we get to do new business, I've got two things that I ask. Uh, first one, what about our books? I don't have an update on that. I know they're working on getting them printed, getting the purchase order and all of that. Oh, so you don't know anything yet. Next thing is, it has to do with project managers. Um, Knoxville having a whole lot of problems with guys being project managers. Um, where contractors like myself or Keith or Reese are, are, are being cut out bidding jobs because a homeowner is hiring a, pro a project manager. Project managers, they're not licensed. Are they supposed to be licensed? If they're supposed to be licensed, then there's a lot of them not being licensed. So how... They're supposed to be licensed. Well, that's what yeah. I thought. But yeah. so... I'm, are they the ones bidding the project managers? Well, no. no, project managers are 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 going in and supervising the building of the houses, and and getting the subcontractors. The homeowner is paying the the project manager, but the project manager is acting the same thing what a builder would do, and we're all licensed, so the builders are all being cut out because a project manager, somebody just off the street, saying, I'm a project manager and great, you go do this. So my question is, I thought that if you're a project manager, you, you should have a license to oversee and do the job. But I want to bring it up in front of the board and find out if I was right, wrong, or indifferent, because it is making a big difference in Knoxville. And I'm sure it's probably doing it in the other cities too, but I've gotten calls out of Knoxville, and I'm all the way in Memphis for me to get calls out of Knoxville. So, so how do we handle that? File a complaint. Uh, it, 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 everybody, need, they need to be filing a complaint to us, and then we will handle it. Uh, Susan, Ritter's back. Susan, have you had any anybody uh, calling you and complaining? 
about what's going on, what I just said? Yes, please. Yeah. Susan, state who you are, and we all do. But. Susan Ritter with the Home Builders Association of Tennessee. I'm the executive director. Um, the Knoxville executive officer reached out to us after a board meeting of theirs, um, which included our <coughs> chairman of government affairs, which is in Memphis. And apparently there are project managers that are, are just going around our system. Um, there were a few potential resolutions, and one would be maybe offer legislation that caps what a homeowner, the price of a home a homeowner can build themselves. Um, and then, of course, the reporting. Our response has always been turn these people in. Um, if you can get any kind of information, turn these people in. And um, that seems to be the easiest solution, but the most difficult. And why that is, I, I, I can't respond. So it is an issue. It's not just an issue in Knoxville. It's an issue everywhere. Um, homeowner built homes are an issue. And, and you all know that better than anyone because those homeowners sell those homes. And they are not playing by the rules. They are not living in it for X number of years. They're building it and moving on. And it's always been a point of contention to our members, how do we fix that? And, you know, in lieu of totally not allowing a homeowner to build their own home because you're violating their property rights, but at the same time, they are not following the rules. So you turn them in, and what happens? Meanwhile, that house has still not been built by a licensed contractor, and that home is still subject to a future home buyer that, has, that is totally unaware that that house was not built by a licensed contractor. How do we fix that? That, that is the whole picture. Um, project managers are a small piece of it. We, we talked about this once before, about people who are pretending to build homes for themselves and they're just building one right after the other, and maybe instituting a rule about how often you can do that, which would limit the amount of times that could be done by the same person. It's supposed to be once a year. Um, we've well, that's in the law now, isn't it? It's once a year. The well, they, once a year is not a, is, is too short. Years. Yeah, if you're building a major house every year and selling it, then that's that's not. It's one every two years. One every two years. But if this is a problem, we know for sure in Knoxville. <laughs> can't you do a, can't you do a letter to the permitting? Uh, authority in Knoxville and, and warn them that this is that they need to have licenses before they can pull a permit? Well, they already have a homeowner's affidavit. We met with them before and I think Home Builders has actually come up with a uh, affidavit that we uh, put our name on it that uh, said, you know, this is stating that I am not hiring a contractor, I'm a homeowner and building the house and if I hire anybody they're going to be licensed. And the homeowner will quickly sign it, but there's not much you can do. It's much, not much code as far as denying it unless they go out there and, you know, able to find, you know, contractors out there actually doing the work. So. About the same issue with house flippers. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's basically the same thing. So how to stop it? is the problem and, and how are you I mean you know, call them liars I don't know how we stop it bottom line is still that homeowners gonna sell that house to somebody unaware so do you get involved in disclosure um, that sort of thing that could be where it could come about is, is some something entitling um, that it be known that the homeowner this was a homeowner built home and and call it to the attention of a potential buyer and but then they most banks now still require home inspections you know I don't know if that if, a lot if, of them that, do yeah and I don't know if that applies to yeah, new constructions will not let a homeowner build their own house I'm
thanks because they'll tell them that to get a letter from us saying that they can build the house or license, I'm gonna build it myself. The bank says, no, nope, gotta have a license. So the bottom line is if you're a project manager, you've gotta have a license. Yep. And if you're doing it, then whoever is seeing that's happening, they need to report it to us, and then we'll take action. If, Susan, if you wouldn't mind, if you could get that out to your members. I'll do that on my way back. Thank you. Um, do we have any new business? <coughs> Everybody like to adjourn? <laughs> okay. Don't move. Don't move. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. How'd I do, Jerry? Good. About 12 seconds early. <laughs> 12 seconds early. All right. There you go. There you go. I get my bonus. There you go.